Previously on the bill. Promise me you'll find her, Neil. I promise we'll do all we can. There's no chance of me being made sergeant at Sun Hill. So if I want my career to progress, it's time for me to start looking for a job at another Nick. Oh, come on, John. Just one night. When was the last time? I don't know, but it was the last time. You said you'd pick her up. She's expecting you outside school. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? I'm on my way to work. Look, ask Debbie. See if she'll look after her till you get back. Now, and don't forget, you're shopping. I am cooking. <laughs> I am going. I am going. I'm gone. Oi, mate. You all right? You're not a political animal, are you? So you want to go for promotion, you can't avoid the politics. You want a leg up, you're going to have to climb that greasy pole. I want to be a sergeant, not a lap dancer. <laughs> Sierra 1 from Sierra Oscar. Go ahead. Frankie Carrillo, the bookmakers. Units 8 to 10, Canley Estate. Silent hold-up alarm being triggered. Received. Shows attending. Over. Help. Oh, someone's had a go at him. Looks like a knife wound. Hey, okay. Matt? Oh, yeah, it's his. Uh, no ID in it, just some cash. So you went through his pockets? I'll take that, please. Excuse me? I said I'll take the wallet. Oh, hi. Nobody informed us you were on scene. This is Sergeant Vicky Wright. She's from Barton Street. Right, sorry. Didn't realise. No, well, procedure. You should have asked for my details. Thanks. So what brings you onto Sun Hill's patch? Oh, Lily's school's just up the road. I drop her off on the way to work. Look, we'd better get a move on, get scenes of crime down here before the tide comes in. Do you want me to knock on some doors, Sarge? Uh, well, it's your shout. No, it's your patch. Uh, I'll go with the ambulance. Oh, I see. We do all the work and you get to go for a ride. <laughs> Sarah at office. It's discreet, isn't it? Oh, I'll go around the back then. Right. Tony. Go ahead, Yvonne. Tony, bring the car to the back of the building. <laughs> All units from Sierra One in pursuit of a car for Ford Mondeo Whiskey 992 Golf Hotel. Mike involved in suspected robbery heading west on Jessup Street. Requested, please. Lavender Crescent. We're in pursuit of a vehicle believed involved in. Stand by, stand by.
cut. Yeah. Two in a car, hostage and the gunman still wearing his mask. Third man made off, Yvonne's giving chase. ARV are on their way. Trouble is, if the gunman decides to walk, we can't do anything until armed officers are here. I don't think he can, Sergeant. I think he's trapped and injured. Sergeant Wright's in the back of the ambulance. Are you sure? Yeah, it's the same index. I'll sort out a call. Uh, OK, call Bart the street, see if you can get Sergeant Wright's mobile number. Can you hear me? What, what's your name? Sweetheart, I need a name. Josh Brown. All right, Josh. You're going to be OK. Can you stop this bleeding? Just keep the pressure on. Hello? Nikki, it's June Atkins. Is everybody all right in there? Yeah, well... We're paramedic is, and so am I, but... What happened? It was a robbery. Our area car was chasing them. One of the guys is armed. Any chance of us getting out the back? Non-existent. The gunman's got the whole area covered. Look, you just sit tight in there until I tell you what to do, all right? OK. There's been another incident, guys. An RTA involved in the getaway car. The driver's armed and he's taken a passenger hostage. The super's on his way there now. Where is it? On the bridge near Canley Road and Jessup Street. OK, so what have we got here? How much are we talking about? Over 300 grand. There was a race yesterday, New Market. The winner was 100 to 1. The bookies coined it. So they usually keep that amount of money here? Overnight, if they can't bank it. The security guard arrived early for his shift, found the night guy tied up upstairs. He pushed us on at alarm. Hi. Hey. If you wouldn't mind. Who's this guy? The managing director. Of the bookies? Yeah. Keeper of the keys and the codes. Sarge. Yeah, the bloke got away, I'm afraid, but I've circulated what we've got. Oh, a nice try. Where's the ARV? No, Sarge. They said they're on their way. Oh, excuse me. Out the way. This man was in his car, the Volvo over there. Bloke got out of another car and punched him, and he's run off. I've managed to get the details, son. Right, get him out of here. Keep your head down. Down. Yes, sir? You got an ID on the men in the getaway car yet? Uh, no, we're still working on it, sir. Right, one of them is the MD of the bookies. They put a gun on him, used him to gain access. His name is Charlie May. Right, thank you, sir. I'm Sergeant June Ackland! I tell you, I'll lose this! We know you need medical attention and we know who your passenger is! Are you all right, Charlie? Yeah, I'm all right. Shut your mouth! Listen, you talk to me only! Everything goes through me! All right, from Sierra Oscar 5-2, receive. I'll lose this! Yeah, go ahead, sir. And get those five people over here! The yeah, ARV's in Canley Road. It'll be here in a minute. We're seeing... Get them to cut me out of this! Is anybody listening to me? Or oh, shit, this no, man! No, look, we hear you, OK? You have to give me time to organise this! <sighs> yeah, go ahead, Nicky. Listen, June... We've got an emergency in here. The ARV will be here any minute. Shocking. Look, he's lost a lot of blood. We can't afford to get into a siege situation. Well, what can I do? Okay. Is he all right? We have to get into the hospital now. Right. 
I just want to ask you something, okay? Do you have a plan? Please don't move. Well, you obviously know you're surrounded by police. I've got that gun! Yeah, but the people in the ambulance, well, we just got caught up in all this. You want me to let you go? Yeah, of course I do. I, there's a bloke in there, he's lost a lot of. No! Blood. No one else moves! There's a guy in there about to bleed to death. You're going to be out for armed robbery, isn't that enough? And you let him die, they'll have you for that and all. The, the smart thing to do would be to let us all go. All you're doing is make a bad situation worse. I think she's right. You can't win this. Come on, what can you do? What, you can use that on him and then on me, are you? No. You're not going to shoot me. That isn't going to happen. And like I said, what's your plan? You're down to two options. Which are? Well, either you can do the butch and sun dance thing, or you can give it up. Save this guy's life and let us all go home. Stations working together, it's positive. Sure. <laughs> what a palaver, eh, Jim? Um, Nikki, come in a minute, shut the door. How many children have you got? Two. And two stepkids. Why? And you're still determined to play the hero, eh? Oh, still smoking the odd cigarette, but I'm trying to give it up. Right, the DAC may be delighted that she's got something in the papers, but the bottom line is, I gave you an instruction, and you chose to ignore it. Is this a wind-up? No, the ARV was due to arrive any second. We could have got you out of there. No, June. You would have got into a siege. It would have been by the book, and the bloke in the ambulance would have bled to death. As it is, we're all alive. So what's your problem? Just look at it for a second from my perspective, right? I'm standing there watching you talking to that guy and I'm thinking, if he fires that gun, what are we going to tell our kids? Mummy was very brave. It wouldn't quite cut it, would it? Come in. The DCI would like to see Sergeant Wright and CID. Right. Yeah, was there something else? Uh, yeah. The guy in the ambulance, he told Sergeant Wright that his name was Joshua Berryman. Yeah. Well, I put his name in the computer, but Joshua Berryman is dead. He died of an overdose by that same bit of river. Anyway, I did a bit of digging, and this is the guy in the ambulance, right? Mm -hmm. His name is Aaron Standen. He went down for Joshua's manslaughter. Got out the nick a couple of weeks ago. The getaway car was stolen last night, guys, and they dressed the rails and never moved. Any witnesses? Uniform are doing a door to door now. Gov, we've got an ID on the gunman, Morris Shaw. Uh, he's from Two Zoffany Road in Glasgow. He's a long way from home. He's got a list of previous as long as you're on. Right, well, the priority is finding this guy who ran away. I want a list of Morris Shaw's known associates, right? Uh, you want to see me, Gov? Barton Street, I'm happy for you to stay with us if that's all right by you. Oh, yeah, sure. See, as you made a connection with the gunman at the scene, you might be able to help us. So if you could come with me. Mr Shaw. Molly Shaw. Put her name to the face, then. 
I'm DCI Meadows. This is Sergeant Wright. Since when did cops start raiding shotgun and ambulances? Since armed robbers started running into him. The address we got for you is Zoffany Road, Glasgow. So what are you doing down here? Seeing a man about a horse. You're a bit of an old hand at this, aren't you, Morris? You know more about time than Stephen Hawking. By the time you get out, you're going to be on a Zimmer frame. And meanwhile, your pal, Tony Blair, well, he gets off scot-free. So much for politics. You want me to grass him up? What are you going to offer me? Armed robbery. At my age, I wouldn't get enough discount to make it worth my while. Aaron? I'm Sergeant Ackland. This is PC Noble. The doctor says that you're going to be OK. Why did you tell us your name was Joshua? I know all about this. You'll have read my file. You did time for manslaughter. Your boyfriend was going cold turkey, but you injected him with heroin. Only the mix was wrong, and he OD'd. It wasn't like that. Just was in pain. I couldn't stand it. I was only trying to help him. Do you think somebody wanted revenge? They were waiting for you to come out of prison? Only, yeah, giving us a false name, it makes it look as if you've got something to hide. Are you frightened of someone? It was a mugging. You were mugged, but they didn't take the cash from your wallet. I need the rest. OK, you need to go now. OK. Has he said anything? No, not yet. I think he's having trouble taking it all in. Right, thanks. Mr May, I'm DCI Meadows. This is Sergeant Wright. Hi. Sit down. Now, as you know, we've arrested the man who was in the getaway vehicle. But we need your help to find his accomplice. Where did they pick you up? Home. My house. Around six this morning. And how did they get in? <laughs> well, they just rang the doorbell. I opened the door to them stupidly. I... I it never occurred to me. They forced their way in and... They put, like, a hood over my head. The safe's code-operated and they needed me to get into it. Can you describe the other man, the one that got away? No, I said I never saw their faces. Right, but you saw their hands, presumably. Were, were they white, black? Look, they were wearing gloves. Well, what else were they wearing? I don't know. I... <laughs> Charlie, is there a reason that you don't want to cooperate? Have you been threatened? They told me not to talk. Well, you're safe. They can't get to you here. No, it's not me I'm concerned about. That's my girlfriend, Cassie. She was with me in the house this morning. They took her too. So what happened after they took you and Cassie from the house? Oh, they just put us in the car, blindfolded. And I was in the front with the guy who had the gun, I think the, the guy you've got. And uh, Cassie was in the back with the other one. And how long did you drive for? 10, 15 minutes. And then they took Cassie out. And they said, I didn't do as I was told. She'd pay the price. Have you any idea where you were when they took Cassie from the car? No, I said I was blindfolded. What about the guy you got in custody? Won't he talk? Things have gone wrong for them, Charlie, big time. Now, these are not nice guys. We need to find Cassie fast. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm frightened. Yeah, sure, I was frightened in the ambulance. But you have to act. Allowing yourself to become paralysed, well, that's not an option. They said something about changing cars after the raid. They'd stolen the one we were in and, and they knew you'd be looking for it. So how did they plan to get away? Steal another. 
Four vehicles have been reported stolen in the last three hours, sir. The closest one to the site of the crash was here on Lasser Street, about 10.30. OK, if we find the second robber, chances are we're going to find this girl. So these are the known associates? Yeah, all this lot. I've worked with Morris Shaw at some point. Alibis? Uh, some, sir, but not all. Two of them are in prison, one of them's dead. Strathclyde police are checking up on the others. CID? So, if the car was stolen at 10.30, whoever it was had a two-and-a-half-hour head start on us. He could be halfway up the M1 by now. Uh, Gov, Morris Shaw's in custody. Book him in. Yes, Gov. Been on to the kidnap squad, have you? I'll phone the details through, sir. If I was him, I'd lay low. Let things cool down a little. Question is where? Well, Dion Manson was talking about trawling the hotels and B&Bs. Fine. If you could coordinate that with uniform, please. Let's talk to Morris. So, where's the girl? Charlie May's girlfriend, Cassie, where is she? She's with your mate, is that it? No comment. Has he got her somewhere? I said, no comment. Do you want it in writing? I don't understand why you're protecting this guy. He's a decent bloke, is he? He's worth all this. Gives you better hope for your sake he is. Because if he touches one hair on our head, you're going to pay the price. Interview terminated 1316. Yeah, listen, you were right earlier. You were running the scene. I should have okayed it with you. Well, it's just that, you know, if somebody's got children and they put themselves on the line like that, worry about it, get a desk job. <laughs> anyway, that's not a problem, is it, for you, kids? Well, actually, the bloke I'm moving in with has got kids, so. So you were thinking, what if it was you in that situation? Well, they've already lost their mum. I wouldn't want anything like that to happen to them again. Sarge. Yep. Aaron Standen. I checked his mobile records. There were two calls made to him from the same number first thing this morning. The number belongs to a guy called Jed Berryman. Berryman? Josh Berryman's father. We've picked him up. He's in the front interview room. Great, thanks. So you've got the wrong man. Uh oh. Is that who I think it is? James Tennant, Sarge. The RTC this morning, abandoned vehicle driver ran off. It's registered to him. He breathalyzed him, he's way over the limit. And he punched the other guy as well. Get the Iron Man. Oi! Oi! Get the Iron Manson down here now! Mr. Berryman, I'm Sergeant Ackland. Am I under arrest? No. We just want to ask you a couple of questions. Thank you for coming in. Would you like to take a seat? Right. According to these phone records, you made two calls to Aaron Standen's mobile phone, one at half past five and one just after six this morning. Yes. He sent a letter to say he wanted to meet me. I phoned to tell him to leave me alone. Before dawn? Mr. Berriman, Aaron was found lying by the riverbank near Plassey Street. He'd been stabbed. Really? You know nothing about that. Aaron was responsible for Josh's death. My son, he gave him an overdose of heroin. For which he served a prison sentence. They were lovers, weren't they? Josh and Aaron. Was that a problem? Did you object to your son being homosexual? What I objected to was that his boyfriend took his life. Josh wanted to leave him, but Aaron wouldn't let him go. What he did, he did deliberately. So Josh was murdered? He put a needle in his arm and he killed him. See, in the US, the same thing would happen to him. An eye for an eye. Here, he gets two years and he's back out on the streets after eight months. Right, just to recap. You make two phone calls this morning before dawn to a man you've just told me you'd like to see dead. A couple of hours later, he's found with stab wounds. What would you think if you were me? We've got a suspect, Jed Berryman. He called you and arranged to meet you early this morning, right? Come on, we've checked your mobile phone records. Like I said, it was a mugging. I had nothing to do with him. He called you, he threatened you, he arranged to meet you. It's pretty clear what's happened, so why won't you cooperate? Sometimes the universe has a way of squaring the circle. Perhaps there's something karmic about all this. Josh's father hates my gut, wouldn't you? But now you want me to give evidence against him. 
The answer is no, so why don't you just forget it and walk away? Because I don't think he will. Look, I can understand you being frightened to talk. But by not cooperating, you lay yourself open to further attack. I love Josh. Do you believe that? Chad's just confused. For some reason, he thinks I want Josh dead. Well, why? I don't know. They were really close. Josh's mother left when he was young. Chad brought him up alone. I loved him in a way I could only ever imagine. It was me who took him away. We're just trying to protect you. No, you're trying to lock him up. Okay, so Jed's angry. He's suffering. Fine. Wouldn't you be? Fair him enough. The last thing he needs from me is more grief. Hey! Keep this up and you're going to seriously injure yourself. James! James, it's Neil Manson. Stand away from the door, please. I'll take this from here. Thanks. What's going on? Got drunk, hit a car. Hit a driver too, so I've been told. You've been arrested for drink, drive and assault. I think I'm losing it. Okay. Look, just uh, sit down, James. Come on. Are you still on your own at home? Uh, what do you mean? It's Ruth there. Obviously, you don't mean Amy, do you? You, you mean Ruth, yeah? I mean, does Ruth know what's going on here? What? Uh, I'm off my head most of the time. Is that what you're asking me? Oh, yeah, she, uh, she rings occasionally. Finds out if I'm still breathing. You could have called me, you know. Why would I want to call you, Neil? Why? Well, because... Because what? You, you've got some good news for me, right? Huh? Good news about Amy. Well, she's not missing. She's not away with the angels. Why would I want to call you, Neil? If I'd known that you needed help. What I need! What I need! Is my daughter back in my arms now, breathing. That's what I need. Look, this. This is not your stuff, this is mine. I mean, it's not like you're a friend, is it, Neil? Okay. I'm, um, going to see if I can get you bailed. Look, James, um, I'm sorry, but you know the wreck this morning? Yeah, hey, what about it? You didn't see anybody running from the car crash, did you? The, the one that nearly hit the ambulance. Oh, right, so this is what this is all about, is it? Neil. When I ran away from the car, I... I sat down to take a breather. This kid come running up, he took a mask off, shoved it in a bin. Young kid, 20s. Can you see his face? Kezia? This associate of Morris Shaw. Strathclyde is still working on it, Gov. Have you got Morris's file? Yeah. What's up? James Tennant reckons he saw him running from the scene this morning, but this guy was in his 20s. I see one six foot fair hair. He's got a son, Curtis. Let's check him out. There you go. No wonder Morris wouldn't grass him up. CID? Let's get his circulated. Thanks. Gov, um, Charlie May's asking to speak to you. There were sounds. I was blindfolded, but there were sounds, I remember. What kind of sounds? Uh, water. The river? Uh, the river. There were boats, uh, maybe a ferry. 
Uh, then there was a mosque. It was prayer time, what do you call it? There's a mosque on Glanville Street, sir. That's not far from the bookies. And then what? Oh, I don't know. We went in the car long after the river, the mosque. Oh, yeah. Then he slowed right down. There was this, like, bleeping lights. You know that sound, pedestrian crossing, like, um... Like bells. Railway crossing. Yeah. Um, I can't say for sure, but we stopped there for a short time. Then I, I think I heard the gates being raised. And as we drove off, it felt like we drove over railway lines. You know, a tough road. Right. And then where? I don't remember these stables being here. That's on Barn Street, Patch. They're not stables anymore, not that I'm aware of. Let's go. <laughs> If I did attack Aaron, then surely he'd say, wouldn't he? Well, you tell me. I'm just interested in the truth. I'm not interested in the psychology. You can't have one without the other. Your questions are so black and white. But there are other things. Feelings. Passions. If the stars are aligned in a certain way, then what you get is a kind of madness. Is that what happened to you this morning? A kind of madness? I think you planned this. I think you went fully intending to take revenge for what you think you did to your son. Am I right? In my dreams, maybe. The court said that Aaron was responsible. He's accepted that. So therefore, it follows that he deserves to be properly punished, yes? Yes. So you attacked him? If I attacked Aaron, then surely he'd say, wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he? Because he thinks you've suffered enough. He said that. He said that he'd taken away somebody you loved and he didn't want to cause you any more grief. Over to you. Oh, police, oh, police, stay where you are! Stay where you are! Hi. Yeah, it's Sergeant Wright. There's a railway line back at Glenville Street. Any idea who'd be responsible for that? Five, grab an ambulance, please. Waste ground. Back at Glanville Street. It's gonna be okay. Right, I want this treat as the crime scene. Yeah, thanks. Well, she's there and she's conscious. No sign of Curtis Shaw. Sure. No, we've been out. This is a setup. How do you mean? The railway line is a freight line. I've just checked. It's close for repairs. The crossing's not operational. It's been out since the beginning of the week. So Charlie May couldn't have had the warning bell because there's no train. Well, if he didn't hear it, he must have seen it. Which means he wasn't blindfolded, and that means he's in on it. Cheers. Can't believe you're letting him go, Sarge. Well, we've got no choice. If Aaron won't give us anything, we can't hold him. Um, look, if, uh, if you feel the need to talk, please don't hesitate to give me a ring. You understand that you're under caution? I understand, but I don't understand why. You said you were blindfolded. The railway crossing's out of action, Charlie. So how did you know it was there? There were bells. No, there were no bells, no lights, nothing. Well, maybe they talked about it. Maybe they said something about a crossing and I got confused. I don't know. You think I'm in on this? Is that what you think? This is my girlfriend we're talking about, my fiance. Why the hell would I do this to her? Because you needed it to look like you weren't involved. It had to be convincing. We put this together, Charlie. Was it your idea? <laughs> this is ridiculous. You sat in the back of that car with that gun to your head and you were playing with us, weren't you? You and Morris both. So where's Curtis? I asked you a question. Well, I don't have to answer, do I? I mean, whatever I say, you've already made up your mind. I mean, you can think what you like, but if nobody's talking, you've got nothing on me, have you? Reports of a suspected jump 
Jubilee Dock Bridge. Can anyone deal? You know, Sergeant, right now, Sarge. Uh, yeah, we did a course together at Hendon. Why? She rubbed you up the wrong way. Yeah, just that business down by the river. Maybe she's stupid, that's all. Let me thankful I'm not working at Barton Street. <laughs> Hi. Hi. It's Jed Berryman. I wanted to thank you and to ask you to apologise for Aaron for me. I think that's the least he can expect. And, and tell him I, I won't be bothering him anymore. Uh, Sierra Oscar from 48. That jumper at Old Jubilee Dock Bridge. Show me deal. Sierra Oscar from 48. I'm at the bridge now. I've got the suspected jumper in sight. I'm sure it's a man called Jed Berryman. I thought once I'd finally confronted Aaron, I could move on. You admit you assaulted him? It was supposed to make it better. But I just feel ashamed. He's rather pulled the rug from under me, hasn't he? I don't know what to do anymore. I, I, I don't understand, Jed. I attacked Aaron because I, I was consumed with trying to square things with Josh's death. Despite what I did to Aaron, he's forgiven me. You, you, you do know I'm, I'm going to have to take you to the station. Yeah? I just miss him so much. According to Kessie, Charlie May's in a lot of debt that the company he works for. He likes to gamble. He's been running up a town. Go on. She reckons he had property, flats he's been letting out. He's had to sell them. There's just one remaining. And that's empty and on the market. You got an address? Flat 2, Landseer Gardens. Saw the back out, Tony. Yep. Right, let's have it. Shaking up, but otherwise she's okay. Have you got enough yet to charge Charlie May? Well, it depends what Morrison's son have got to say for themselves. Right, interview commencing with Curtis Shaw at 17.45. Those present, Robert Deakin, duty solicitor, and myself, DCI Meadows. So, whose idea was it? What's my dad said? I ask the questions, you supply the answers. So he's not said nothing? Look, it was nobody's idea. It came up in conversation, organically. And was Charlie part of this uh, organic conversation? Charlie who? You were at his flat, the guy from the bookies. What about him? Where did you meet him? When we got into his house and put a gun to his head. So what were you doing hiding out in his flat? Look, he had the keys hanging up by the front door of his house. My dad asked him about him. He said they had this flat that he was renting out. He was now selling it. I said I'd take it off his hands, just for a laugh. And I took the keys. If Charlie's got nothing to do with it, what was Curtis doing at his flat? Kind of points towards Charlie having made that possible, don't you think? Well, there was, like, this estate agent's brochure, Pente's war of a flat he was selling, and... Curtis said, well, if we're taking the money off the bookies, we may as well take his flat, too. Just for a laugh. So when you crashed the getaway car, Curtis had already nicked the keys to the flat. Is that what you're saying? He got it. 
hundred percent. So you're saying that Charlie didn't offer you them, the keys? He didn't suggest that you use his flat? But why do you keep asking? You don't think he was in on this, surely? Charlie was cacking himself. You can see that with the security tape. You don't think he was putting that on, do you? So father and son are both saying the same thing. What I don't get is, what's in it for Morris? He's going down, so is his son. They're just going to let Charlie walk. Bail him, will you? Charlie may. But take your time. I just want to try one more thing. I can understand you wanting to help Curtis. But Charlie? And what's he got on you? What are you on about? Well, this car wreck. He has you holding a gun to his head like he's a victim, but he's running the whole show. Do you think that Charlie is a guy worth looking out for after what he did to his girlfriend? She's all right, isn't she? Yeah. And she would have been all right, but he panicked. And he told us where she was. And she told us about the flat. You don't say. Yeah, but for that, Curtis would have walked. It's Charlie's fault, but he's been released, and you're taking the flag. Now, I think it's time you started thinking about your son. Now, if you play ball and... And what? You can get him a reduced sentence. You could offer me that. You know the game as well as I do. Now, I'm thinking that maybe you were pushed into a corner somehow and forced into this. Is that right? Now, the judge would take that into consideration. He didn't exactly force me, no. Curtis. Curtis works in one of his betting shops. Charlie caught me his hand in the till. He was already on license. If Charlie had reported him, he would have gone down for a long stretch. So he said he'd square it if Curtis did him a favour. Yeah, but Curtis was out of his league. I was there to look after him, if you can believe that. Charlie owed a lot of money. This is supposed to be his way out. Everybody was supposed to win. Oh, no. Everybody loses. Interview terminated. 18.23. Get him back to his cell, will you? Mr May? Nearly, but not quite. Charlie, mate, I'm arresting you for kidnapping and armed robbery. You don't have to say anything when I'm your defence if you do not mention when questioned, something you later rely in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Sergeant Nicky Wright. I've just been talking about her at Barton Street. You know, her husband works there. He's a sergeant as well. She's let it be known that she'd like a transfer wants to separate home and work. You've got a vacancy for a uniform sergeant, and she's available, so... Thanks. But I've got somebody here I want to see in the job. I'll think about it. Talking about separating personal life from work, I've been missing seeing you outside of here. I have to go, Georgia. I'm looking after my daughter tonight. Rihanna Nat on the town, is she? No strings. Just some time. You and me. I think we both need that. Promise me one thing, okay? What? If they offer you sergeant here, take it. Oh, what a good idea, Bruce. Did you make it? Yeah, well, thanks to you. You've earned yourself some brownie points there. Did you get a result in his assault? You could say that. It's, uh... Night, Sarge. Oh, Good night. Night. See you. Not if I see you first. Anyway, thanks for today. Glad to be of service. Maybe we'll catch you soon, yeah? Yeah, sure you will. It's me. 
you manage to pick Lily up all right and get the shopping? <laughs> How was my day? Well, you know, nothing unusual. I'll tell you about it at home. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. Bye. Next time on The Bill. Carrie doesn't use anymore. She could be dealing. I said she don't do drugs, period. He never abused me. It was all made up. You've got 24 hours to get wilder with my full support. Break it down. She's crazy! Stay back! Coming next tonight here on ITV1. Mutants. Since the discovery of their existence, they have been regarded with fear, suspicion, often hatred. It's the sequel to X-Men and movie premiere X2. And over on ITV3, a hired assassin is killed for cash in The Magnificent Seven.